Hey guys and welcome and thank you for joining me for today's shave. I know it's been a while since my last video so I'm uh, really excited to be back here and make another one for you. Work's been a little bit crazy for me recently and I still didn't think I could make videos of the quality that I want to make recently due to my uh, need for sleep and take care of other things in life. Uh, but this week's been pretty good so I want to get back in front of the camera. So let's go ahead and get started with today's shave. I just got a shower, facial hair is nice, cleaned out, hydrated, ready to go. I have about a day and a half of facial hair growth right now. Um, prior to that last shave, a day and a half ago, I'd gone almost six days without shaving. I'd still trimmed up. Whenever I grow out my facial hair, um, I just think it looks a little bit scruffy if I just let it grow. So I do uh, trim up just here on my cheeks just so there isn't like some scraggly hairs up here. And I trim down here because then, you know, facial hair just kind of fades out on, your, on my neck at least. So I make a little line here and I trimmed it up. Anyway, my shave a day and a half ago, I shaved with my Mercor 34C, which is actually packed in my bag. I'm about to head out of town for a wedding this weekend. Um, and I'm taking that with me. That's my go-to travel razor. It's my favorite razor, Mercor 34C. So that goes with me. Anyway, that's packed right now. But I used that razor with a feather blade in there. Since I had about six days of facial hair growth, I thought that I needed a blade with a little more cutting power, like a feather blade. Those are the sharpest blades out there and it did an excellent job. It was a great shave, very smooth, but I think that that blade was just a little too rough for my skin because feathers are so sharp, but they aren't the smoothest blades out there. And just without shaving every single day, you know, my skin kind of loses its, uh, its resistance or its, you know, its hardiness to being shaved. That's why I got into this style of shaving in the first place was due to face irritation after shaving. I just get a lot of ingrown hairs and everything, razor burn. Um, anyway, so after six days without shaving, jumping on the feather blade, it was a little bit much. I have a little bit of irritation here. Um, and actually not much on the neck, but just right here, I could just feel it felt a little raw after the shave, but uh, no bleeders, anything like that. So that's kind of the background for today's shave. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be using Barrister and Man uh, LGC. That's what you'll often see it referred to as. It's Le Grand Shapir, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I don't know, Barrison Man has a, it's a lot of fancy names for their uh, shaving soaps, but I think that that is the scent for this. This is just such an excellent soap in terms of performance. Uh, Barrison Man has recently switched their formulation around a little bit over the past year or so. And the, uh, it was already such an excellent performance, but this new formulation is really, really excellent. I think that they were somehow able to step up their game a little bit more. And the scent on this soap, Really nice. It's a. Uh, it's not very bright. I don't get any citrus in there. Let me see what it says. I got in here. <laughs> Go figure. Okay. Well, don't listen to me. The first uh, scent in here is citrus, then oak moss, labdanum, rose, and frankincense. I just. I really don't. Despite the saying citrus, I really don't get much in there. If so, it's a very, very background scent in there. I get a decent amount of rose and oak moss in there in the frankincense. I'd say this has a. Uh, it starts off floral, but then it's just got a nice, uh, kind of wholesome spice background. It's not like a spicy, like a bay rum spice, but just kind of like that, uh, that kind of savory scent to it. I didn't know what I thought of the scent at first, but I absolutely love it. It's actually one of my favorite scents uh, currently. So, so the soap was blooming while I was in the shower. Just put some hot tap water here on top of the puck. Go ahead and take off the bloom water and add it to my face. So if you guys are shaving and blooming your soaps, and that I, I highly recommend blooming your soaps, if it's a harder shaving soap, don't waste that bloom water because it has soap already uh, dissolved in there. Just add it to your face. You're going to need to add water to your face anyway to face lather or to add the lather to your face from a bowl. So go ahead and take that and uh, just add it to your face because you might as well get extra soap on there. All right, today's shaving brush. I am going with the Simpsons Chubby 2 and Best Badger. Here it is, you can take a look at this. Simpsons, one of these amazing traditional shaving companies out of uh, Great Britain. These are all handmade, excellent. And this Chubby 2 is just awesome. It's a really nice size. It's a big knot diameter. I think it's 28 millimeters. So much hair in there, but they said the knot in there, you see the overall loft of the uh, of the hairs here is not very high, so it just has a ton of backbone and they're very densely packed. And despite being such a big knot, it doesn't splay out too large. I think you can see here other 28 millimeter knots I've tried before because the loft is higher. When you set them on your face, it just splays out huge. Um, but this one does not do that, and I believe that's due to the uh, 
the height of the knot here in the brush. All right, and go ahead and load up here for face lather. So as you guys know, I'm face lather. Um, there's really, for you new guys out there, there's two ways to lather um, shaving soap or shaving cream, and that's either in a bowl or face. And so it's bowl lathering or face lathering. Bowl lathering includes the same thing, you know, loading up your brush here from the puck uh, for a shaving soap. For a cream, you can just grab some out and throw it in the bowl or on your face. And with, a, uh, with bowl lathering, you take your loaded brush and you go into a bowl and build the lather there. As opposed to face lathering, you load up here and go straight to your face. Um, and you build the lather on your face. With a bowl, you build it in the bowl, then apply it to your face. I used to bowl lather when I first started. I thought that, that was a good way to learn how to lather. And uh, I'd recommend you guys, for you new guys out there who are just learning to lather and need some practice, bowl lather a couple times. It's going to, uh, you're going to really feel, you know, your ability to build a lather and to, uh, and to get the consistency, how you like it, you know, and it takes some tweaking. You gotta be careful with the amount of water content in your lather. And I think it just gives you a good feel of bowl lathering for how to lather up, what a good lather looks like, and kind of how lather works. And you know, if you're bowl lathering, then just uh, if you're practicing, add in a couple drops of water at a time, keep building, 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 and you'll see that as you add in more water. Just clean off the puck. After I'm done using a puck, I just rinse it off here under the uh, tap, and I set it over here. I've got a rack. I set it here upside down to dry. Anyway, just a small aside. Um, anyway, when you're practicing bowl lathering, uh, just go ahead and uh, what I'd recommend is adding in a little bit of water. You know, a couple drops at a time, then lather that up. A couple drops, and you'll see as you add in more water, the lather tends to build in volume. Um, and you can see, like, you'll be like, oh, wow, like, the volume on this, it'll, all, you'll see it just take off and really start growing. Um, but then it gets to a point where it gets oversaturated with water, and the water actually starts to destroy the lather. And you'll see it'll get bubbly, foamy looking, and that's not good lather. You want something really rich and creamy that looks like Cool Whip, uh, something like that. Just got the lather in my nose. Anyway, but I, uh, I face lather because I think it A, saves time, and B, if I'm going to be spending the time building a lather, I'd rather just use that time working the lather into my face. Because you have to spend time anyway, once you bowl lather, then you have to take the lather from the bowl and apply it to your face. And I think a really important aspect of shaving is spending time working it onto your face and into the hairs and uh, getting it in contact with your skin like I'm doing here. So. I figure, you know, might as well save time, build the lather on my face, and get the other plus of just the extra time of working the lather on my face. Now, if you have any sensitive areas, uh, like I have it right kind of here, these are sensitive areas for me that that last sit, uh, shave kind of made a little bit raw. I spend a little bit of extra time in those areas just really working the lather. And I feel like that does something. I feel like it, you know, it works it in a little bit better there, helps protect the skin a little bit better. In actuality, you know, I have no data. I don't know if that actually makes a difference, but at least it makes me feel like I'm doing something to protect my skin in those areas. All right, then when I'm happy with the lather consistency, which I'm very happy with here, just kind of paint over. There we go. Beautiful, very, very beautiful lather. <laughs> I didn't have to add any more water to the lather either. It was just kind of perfect from the get-go. Kind of got lucky there. All right, for today's safety razor, I'm going with the Razor Rock uh, Quick Change DE. So this is a vintage style razor out from Razor Rock. It's a twist to open, so you twist it here on the bottom, and it's a butterfly or twist to open, barn door style, lots of different names for these. Uh, but it's pretty cool. There's like a bar here in the center. This is uh, modeled after more vintage type of safety razors, like vintage Gillette's were like this. You take your blade, set it in there, and just tighten from the bottom, and it closes down. Then I just always check my blade exposure. This, this razor actually does a pretty good job with blade exposure. Just make sure it's equal on both sides. Um, but I check it nonetheless, just to make sure there's nothing crazy going on before I start my shave. Alright, looks good. 
Go ahead and get started with the shave. First pass with the grain. Oh, I didn't mention, I have a uh, Voshkod blade in here. This is a, a fresh Voshkod. I chose a uh, Voshkod blade for the shave because uh, for me, oh, sorry, there's my dog. Uh, Voshkod blades are very, very smooth for me. And since that little bit of irritation I had that I spoke about, I just want to make sure that I don't make my irritation worse. Hold on just a second. I am sorry about that interruption. This is Jefferson, who you guys met in uh, previous videos. He's getting bigger now. Anyway, he uh, gets a little bit excited sometimes when someone walks by our window. So he's going to be in here. So if you hear some noise, it's just him here in the background. All right, anyway, Voshkod blade. I chose it. Very smooth blade. Um, not incredibly sharp blade, but really not uh, dull either. It's a, it's a really nice blade. It's, uh, it's one of my most five, it's one of my top five most commonly used blades for sure. Alright, first pass felt good. It was a comfortable uh, pass for sure. So have a good amount of hair to take down when I'm just feeling around. I think you guys can hear that. All right, back to the brush, reapply lather. For subsequent passes, I don't work it back into my skin. I just don't think that there's any benefit to that, at least for me. All right, second so pass, cross grain this direction. I really like this uh, this safety razor from Razor Rock. It's a very mild shaver. Uh, it's so comfortable to use. And it's only $9.99, so I think this would be a very excellent first safety razor, especially for someone who's coming into uh, safety razor shaving with sensitive skin. And for me, since I have more sensitive skin, I do like this razor. I've shaved with it a couple times. Uh, I don't think that this razor would be a winner for people who like are just shaving with like the Mula R41 or a really aggressive slant razor, or a really aggressive open comb. I don't think this is going to have the level of aggressiveness that you would like. And if you have very hardy skin and a thick beard, I just don't know if it has the overall cutting power to really give you a close shave if, uh, if that's what you're used to. But for someone with more sensitive skin like me, it is, uh, it's right up my alley. Alright, third pass, cross grain in this direction.
right, so there are my three basic passes here, feeling around. See how shaved it is. It's uh, not a tear. I have a little piece of hair here up high, my, um, high up on my cheek. There we go. I'll just grab that now. Okay. Feeling around. It's not terribly close. It's a close shave, but it's not like the closest shave I've ever had by any means. Um, but it's very comfortable. It feels good on my neck. I'm happy with where that's at. Just a little bit there. I don't really need to re-lather right now if I'm just going to clean up a few areas just because the slickness is so good from this soap and it feels great. Under my nose here, my mustache hairs, I grow up really close to my nostrils, so this area always just takes me a little bit more effort to get all those hairs out of there. If I had to say that the one downside to this razor, you can see at the tabs of the safety razor blade here, they're not exposed on the edge of the, uh, um, the safety razor head. So what that means is that it's a little bit wider here, so the distance from the edge of the razor to where the blade starts is just a little bit wider, so it's hard to reach up right in there. Still a little bit. There's still just a little bit. It's driving me crazy. All right. I'm just going to put on a uh, final cleanup lather here. I'll pull it out of the brush. Why not? Last pass. See what we got. Look at that. So much lather. It's beautiful. Really creamy looking. It's a really nice sheen to the surface of the lather, which really shows me it's very, very hydrated. Might as well put it on here, it keeps skin more protected. I'll skid over here, might as well. Alright, there we go. Finally got it. Okay, I'm happy with where this is at. I'm going to go ahead and get cleaned up. Alright, film back here. Great shave. Very uh, smooth feeling. Um, it's not completely close. I've got little areas that are still a little bit rough, but that's uh, it's really not what I was looking for in this shave. I wasn't aiming for like the closest shave I've ever had. I was really aiming to just have a very comfortable shave. Feels nice and smooth. You can see no redness here. Really does feel great. Um, I'm very happy with that. That's exactly what I was looking for. That's why I went with a more mild razor with a mild blade in there. Just looking for something to clean myself up. Um, but like I said, not the closest shave out there. This weekend I'm traveling for a wedding. I uh, live here in Boston. It's out in uh, the LA area, so it's across the country. And then there, I'm, I'm a groomsman in the wedding, so I don't want to have a uh, irritated face. All right, let's go ahead to the post-shave. I'm going to go with the Fine Snake Bites. This is an awesome aftershave, alcohol-based from Fine. Um, it's unscented, but it has a ton of menthol in there, which is really, really nice. I've been using this, as you can see, a lot throughout the summer here. Go on, dab on a little bit, and apply. It's a really great sensation with this. 
sorry, I always blink with menthol. It just irritates my eyes right at first. Because um, you get the little bit of burning sensation from the alcohol. I didn't have actually too much burn, just a little bit here and here. Um, and then at the same time that you're getting that little bit of burn from an aftershave, you also get the, uh, the cooling sensation from the menthol. And this stuff is, is very, very cooling. If you don't like menthol, I'd stay away from this. But if you like menthol, I'd definitely recommend this. I love fine aftershaves. They make some excellent stuff. Sorry, this blink will go away in just a minute. Anyway, just a quick shave I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm uh, looking to get back and make more of them now. Uh, my life has calmed down slightly at work, so I'll have a little bit more time, and I'd love to get back here and make more videos. So thank you for your patience. Uh, while my uh, life outside of shaving has been a little bit crazy, but I will be back with more soon. Sorry about the blinking. This menthol always gets me. It'll go away in like a minute. Anyway, that was today's shave, and as always, guys, thank you so much for watching.